No, I mean, I was locked up. By the time mm-hmm. I came home, the homie had passed. But I would call him on the phone. You know, they'll come up every now and then to see me on the VI. So that's basically the relationship. But as far as hanging out with him and knowing him on a personal level, nah, nah. We, we didn't have that type of relationship. I got you. I got you. So you come home and uh, was you, did you think about rapping like when you first come home or when you got home, you, you was like, you know what, I can rap and put you in the studio. Like, how did that come about? Well, when I came home, I ain't going to front. Before I came home, I had wrote some songs down. I was dipping and dabbing, whatever. But when I first came home, you know, I didn't I didn't pursue that. I was basically just, you know, riding with Joe, holding him down. You know, I used to do my own little things on the side. Like, you know, I opened up uh, FJ Films. That's when the DVDs was banging. So, you know, I was doing all types of little things to eat. I would promote clubs, you know. I would... um help some of the producers sell beats. Like, you know, I get in where I fit in. You know what I mean? So that was that situation. No, no doubt. I got you. I got you. And, uh, <laughs> like, did the crew, did because they had already had built some sort of rapport with you, even behind bars, you saying, but... Oh, they knew who I was. They definitely knew who the fuck I was. Definitely. Each and every one of them. You know, when, when I came home, they fell right in line. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. When you came home, they accepted you right away? They had no choice. They definitely had no choice. I had a, I only had a back out on flex, full flex, rest in peace. You know what I mean? He was the one that was holding the squad down at that time, but he definitely was not no Charlie Rock LD. So when I came home, I basically had to, you know, put him in his place and I went straight to the top general spot, you know, and it is what it is. No, I got you. I got you. And uh, can you tell us about the 50 Cent? Like what had happened with 50 Cent? <clears throat> I was the uh, beef. Well, from what I understand, it was a beef, you know, that was you know, out on the streets. You had got locked up, I, right? <clears throat> so this is what happened. I came home. I came home in 02. And uh, again, repping the real, the crazy podcast. I got the Tupac stories. I got the crazy stories. Y'all could go on my channel, Charlie Rock, and you'll catch all my episodes there. I only been out like three, four months. But we're at 2.5 million views. Your boy is killing them right now. Little Joey, I know you. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it is what it is, man. Um, Okay, back to the 50. I um, I came home in 02. I, co- I got caught up on a violation. What was it? 04? The end of 03, 04, I, I went up on a violation. So, um, at that time, the 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 beef between Fat Joe between Terror Squad and G Unit was going on. You know what I mean? So it was going out on the street, but I was up top. So of course I'm I'm you know I'm keeping my head in the street. I know what's going on, whatever and all that. <clears throat> I was only on a violation, so I think I was doing like 18 months, something like that. So we in the yard, the awards come on. Joe, that's the awards where Joe says some foul shit about 50, and then 50 says some shit about Joe, whatever, whatever. And dudes in the yard started getting hype. You know, on some yeah, G unit, you know what I mean? F fat Joe and this and F Terror Squad, and they know who I be. They was banking on the fact that they knew I was going home in four months and I wasn't gonna pop off. So they was that's what I like to call testing the waters. You know, Charlie going home in four months. He ain't going to pop off. You know what I mean? Ha! Little did they know they was dead wrong. I pulled out the ice pick and banged one of them in the neck, and we got it on. And in the process, your boy got stabbed in the eye. You know what I mean? And I'm blind in one eye right now. I'm talking to you with one headlight. I banged one of them in the neck. You know, we got the crazy 300 Spartan going on. And, you know, and I got stabbed in the eye with an ice pick. And right now I'm blind in one eye. So I come home, whatever, whatever. This is when Joe tells me, yo, Charlie, we can't be cool until you're home for like about a year. And I see that you were eyed and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, you wildin', my nigga. How the fuck you gonna tell me some shit like that? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where our fallout began. Wow. And did like in between these different eras, like what was that? How many years ago? When I came home, I'm we talking about years ago, my man. Um, oh no. 
As far as what? You said that you had a fall uh, issue when he came and seen you. No, no. When I came home. Okay. I came home with one headlight. I'm telling him I banged in the yard defending your honor. I could have easily just mind my business and just kept it moving. But that's not who I be. If you my brother, you my brother. You know what I mean? Like, I take that shit. I take that shit respect and honor to the heart. Again, I was raised in the Department of Correction. Everything in prison is your honor, your reputation, and your word. Again, that's where I was raised at. I went in at 18 and came home at 35. Do the math. You know, it's, Joe at the time was my brother, and I wasn't going to let nobody disrespect him. Yeah. Yeah, and I got you. And his response, in his, what was his response? Like, his was, response was like, I understand you banged out. I understand you blind. But uh, we can't rock until I see you home for a while when you act there. The problem with Joe is that I guess at this time he was already rich and famous. Every He got used to everybody kissing his ass. And he basically wanted Charlie Rock to bow down. And I'm like, I'm like, homie, you my brother. Like, he would have a problem that I would talk to him like I would always talk to him. And I'm like, yo, I'm not disrespecting you. You my brother. Why do you, why you feel like I have to talk to you like, oh, please and excuse, laugh at your corny jokes and be a yes man. And that's not me. That's not me. And the last thing he thought was that he's rich, he's famous. The last thing he thought that I was going to say, fuck you and keep it moving. And that's exactly what your boy did. Fuck you and kept it moving. We in the yard. Rock with your boy. No, I got you. Got you. Oh. But let me say something. He didn't only do that to me. He did that to a few dudes in the crew. If ever somebody did so, he did it to Raul. He did it to Fat Ant. He did it to a couple of other dudes. If you did something he didn't agree with or... He just felt a certain way about you. He would isolate you. This is what the dude was on. He would isolate you and no contact, no hanging out, no nothing. For like eight months, a year, and then he'll come back, give you a couple of dollars. All right, you could come back now. That was his way of not only checking that person, but checking everybody else in the crew. That's the type of shit this dude was on. And I heard like it, I could have swore I heard a story too. I don't know allegedly, but um, I think you might have said that his brother, his brother was in the hood. Yeah, his brother's crazy. His, his brother, brother, his brother, unfortunately fell victim to substance abuse. You know what I mean? I went through that too. I definitely went through a point of substance abuse. You know what I mean? I'm a real dude. I don't hide nothing. I don't cap, and I don't lie. It is what it is. I got no problem. In, I'm a man. I got no problem admitting what I used to do. So, yeah. I mean, just walk with me on this. Mm -hmm. Your brother's fat Joe, rich and famous, and his brother Angel is on a corner in the South Bronx asking people for a dollar so he could eat something. Wow. Let, let that sink in, Chuck. Let that sink in. Your brother's fat Joe, rich and famous, holding millions, and your brother, your blood brother, is on the corner asking people for a dollar so he could get a sandwich. Like, you know, this is common knowledge. Anybody from the Bronx know this. You know, anybody that knew Angel, you know what I mean? You know, and they know the story. Like, you know, Joe always been on some other shit, man. I mean... I mean, I guess when you become rich and famous, you know, you, you get full of yourself and, and you know, and it is what it is. You know, whoever says that they'll be rich and famous and they'll never change is because they never been rich and famous. Rock with your boy. I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. You know, and, you know, it, it, it is what it is. That's the type of person he was. That's the type of person he still is. And, you know, and that's where we had the crazy fallout. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't bowing down. I wasn't kissing your ass. Chuck, I didn't think I had to do that. Plus, I wasn't going to do it anyway. But I'm like, yo, you my brother. I love you. I've done proved my loyalty to you a hundred thousand times. Another thing. Remember what I said. 
your boy took 20 years when I could have got five or six. You know what I mean? It is what it is. No, no doubt. And, um, you know, as far as, like, Fat Joe has, like, over these years, have he ever reached out to you and tried to mend the relationship? Well, he dropped a book. Again, Fat Joe dropped a book, but the book of Jose, like, two, three months ago. And he mm -hmm. tells the crazy stories about Charlie Rock LD. He calls me C. Like, like dudes don't know who the hell C is. But he tells the stories on how I held him down, saved his life, showed him the streets. You know what I mean? Always, you know, had his best interest in mind. Whatever, whatever. And he said, these are his words. And his last thing that in our last, the last time he seen me was in front of Hot 97. And I pulled up on him and he felt that I was going to body him for whatever reason. He felt like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he told he told the dude that was with him, you holding? And the dude was like, yeah. He was like, if this dude pull out, you know what I mean? Let it ring because this dude's a murderer. Charlie's a murderer. You know? And I guess he felt like that because his conscience. He know he did a brother wrong. You know what I mean? He know he, you know, my hand didn't call for that. And again, this is what he wrote in his book. You know what I mean? The book of Jose. And like far as recently, I know, you know, it's been different um Instagram lives that's been surfacing on the internet. And a lot of people yeah, say Yeah, your boy is viral. We've been going at it back and forth, you know what I mean? So because the truth is out. And it's not just hear me out, it's not just your boy Charlie Rock, it's Cuban Link, Big Punch Wife, like all the foul shit that he's done is catching up to him. You know what they say? Everything done in the dark sooner or later comes to the light. So all the foul stuff he's done, not just to Charlie Rock, but to a thousand other people. I'm not the only one, you know, speaking on shit that he's done. You know, I mean, Pun's wife said they hit four million dollars that he had to give Pun's wife and he didn't give it to her. They went to court. He said in court that he gave her a million dollars. <laughs> Homie, you wild. How you going to tell the judge you gave a million dollars? The judge gave him 90 days to prove. That he gave her the, the, the mill and he couldn't prove it. So you lying, the Cap King. <laughs> wow. And um, like what's what's like what's your take on that? Like when it comes down to it, like yo, your honest opinion, like you knowing the history, but at the end of the day, if you was looking on the in, like on the outside looking in, how how you feel about it? He's wrong. He's wrong. How you gonna first of all, let me let me. But I'm sure they know. And again, everything your boy is saying, you can go online and look it up. Let me share this with you. <clears throat> Pun's wife and family was going through some hard times. This was years ago. She went on Hot 97 and she aired them out. She was like, yo, we're doing bad. <clears throat> me and my family's in a shelter right now. I haven't heard from Joe in over 10 years. And you know, and it is what it is. The homie Fat Joe calls the station, goes on live in the station, and tells her, Ma, what you need to do is get a job and don't be counting my money. How you going to tell Big Pun's wife that, yo? This dude is crazy. Right. You know, it's crazy. Like, again, there's a thousand little stories like this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, y'all could look it up. Look up Fat Joe, Captain, oh, or whatever. Man. And it's crazy. Like, there's mad stories out there. And like I said, you know, everything done in the dark sooner or later comes to the light, you know, and karma always come back right now. Karma is smashing little Joey. My man, you made your bet. I know you watching this little Joey. I know you watching this because you watch everything I do. You made your bed, homie, and now you got to lay in it. You know what I mean? You know what you did was wrong. Not even Charlie Rock, but Big Pun's wife. How you going to be like, that's my twin. I love him and this and that. And let's keep it real. Pun was the one that put the squad on the map. Pun, yeah. Pun's album was not only a classic album, but it was a historical album because he was the first Latin to go platinum. That's a fact. And, and then, uh, another fact. Not only did Pun make Joe millions of dollars, but he put him in a position to be an executive. Because right after Pun blew, Atlantic stepped to Joe and they and they, you know, and they put aside $10 million for a terror squad imprint deal. 
So again, not only did the homie made you millions, but, but on the strength of him, you became an executive and you got $10 million. You know, so again, I'm just saying you owe pun, man. Fuck publishing, fuck points, fuck business. You know what I mean? On some moral, on some moral ish. You supposed to take care of that dude's family. How you gonna tell Pun's wife get a job and don't worry? Another fact. And again, we can all look this up. Remy, Remy Ma calls Pun's wife one day and and she tells her, yo, did you get the 30 stacks that I gave Joe to give you? And she was like, nah. Jo Remy gave Joe 30 stacks to give to uh to give to Liza. And the homie just dead at her for the 30 stacks. Ew, that's crazy.